nice. What's up guys, it's RevJ again. Now, months ago, I picked up one of the $35 Amazon Kindle Fires. Now this is the seventh gen Kindle Fire. Not extremely powerful, but does run a form of the Android operating system and it has all the basic uh, utilities of a regular tablet at a compensated $35 price tag. Even if you didn't buy them at that point, all through the holidays they were I think no more than 50 bucks from a number of retailers. So very possible you picked one of these up. So anyway, I picked up one of these tablets, 35 bucks, to use as a field monitor. Now there are a couple challenges when doing that. First of all, this tablet runs a sort of locked version of Android. It's all got the Amazon bloatware built onto it. It can't run a traditional version of Google Play Store, the Play Store, um, and so that kind of interferes with problem number two, which is getting the software on the tablet to run the DSLR. It's not native. You actually have to have an app to do it. That app is called DSLR Controller. I'll show you guys that in a second. So what do we actually have to do? Because I'm doing it right now. Right? You guys can see here. I'm doing it right now. It is working. What did I do to get it to function? And what are sort of the benefits of doing it? Well, the first thing I had to do is kind of the hardest. I had to go out and basically figure out how to get a traditional Play Store onto the Kindle Fire. I went over to XDA Dev, uh, which is a forum for those of you guys that aren't familiar. They do a lot of phone hacking, basically Android development, stuff like that. I read a lot of threads over there. And basically, I found out that the bootloader on the Kindle Fire is locked, right? You cannot just write over the bootloader and have sort of a normal flashable device. I managed to get it up using a couple of tools that I found on that website, went through the command line, got into the bootloader, and ended up loading a Cyanogenomod onto this. Now I also tried something called Slim, but the Cyanogenomod worked better. I also run Cyanogenomod on this, so I was somewhat familiar with it. This is the OnePlus One, this is the phone I use. You guys might have heard about this, they also released a OnePlus Two, pretty cool stuff. So I was familiar with Cyanogen from this. And I'll show you guys the boot screen right now, so you definitely believe me. Um, and I could go to Google Apps. I do have a couple little errors, nothing major. I just get an error that says the Exchange server stopped working all the time. I'm working on that. A lot of other people haven't reported that issue, so I wouldn't worry about that too far. So once you've got the Play Store onto your device, you can basically use it like any other Android tab. Tablet. You can download DSLR controller, which I'll show you here, get it all installed, and hook up your camera. Now there's one more thing you're going to need. The Amazon tablet itself is not a host device, and neither is the DSLR. So this is a OTG cable, or a USB host cable, and you need to have that in line between my camera cable and the uh, Fire tablet itself, so it considers this a host device. Basically, it recognizes that it's there and that it needs to interface with it. So once you have the remote control, basically, I did it here on the desk, you get camera inception. And that is, the device shows the device showing the device showing the device. So now on here, and I'll zoom in in a second here, you've got your white balance controls, your meters, your focus controls, your recording controls, snapshotting, basically all the things that you would traditionally use on the little viewfinder screen on the back. There is a tiny bit of a delay, and I'm not sure if that's related to the type of cables I'm using or the length of cable I'm using or just part of going over USB. That would be my theory. Uh, but it does show a accurate enough picture and is plenty large enough to do all the controls and the basic framing you need to. I gotta have one big caveat to this. The pixels are not perfectly square on this device. They're a little bit, I don't know, hexagonal? They're a little bit off. So it'll look like some things are sort of like aliased or fragmented. The camera still uh, focuses fine. Nothing's wrong, nothing's incorrect. However, it's sort of a side effect of this screen. So for super high precision manual focusing, it's really not perfect. However, most of the time you'll get right there. I glitched it there for a second. So uh, I'm looking at it right now as you guys can see. And it's not perfect for some of that, but for auto-focusing, for seeing where I am in the picture, it works so well compared to trying to line up that little tiny camera screen on the back. I have all sorts of accessories built to my camera. There's no way I'm gonna see that thing. So this is nice. Now, while recording this, the glitch there for a second, and I'll explain why. If you switch away from this app, it stops your recording, at least the best I understand, it stops your recording. 
that's kind of annoying. I'd like to be able to switch away from the app uh, and keep the shot going. So I don't know if that's a setting I can change in here or just an inherent flaw with the way it's designed. Now I was gonna switch away to show you that you can also control your GoPro with it over Wi-Fi. So if you have multiple things going at once on a shoot, it's nice. However, like I said, the second I switch to the GoPro app, it's probably gonna cut my filming here. So we're gonna experiment. I'm gonna to go to the menu, I'm gonna hit menu, and I'm gonna switch over to the GoPro app to see if it'll pick up where I left off. If all goes right, and I'm guessing my GoPro's off, so that's not good, I should be able to switch over seamlessly. So, let's see what happens here in a second. I'm gonna to try to hold menu, menu, attempting to connect. And I bet you my GoPro battery died because I have not filmed anything in which my GoPro battery hasn't died on me when using Wi-Fi. Are we still recording? Yes, we're still recording, okay. That's really weird. Apparently if you hit home, it doesn't do it. So you can't hit home and go back to it. It will consider you that ex uh, you exiting the program, but if you hit uh, just menu to switch programs, seems to go fine. For the record, it did switch over to the GoPro app here. I don't know if you can see that. It did switch over to the GoPro app. However, my GoPro, which was recording this whole time, uh, decided to shut off. So uh, I'll go ahead and edit in any footage I did shoot while doing this to make sure that it worked and prove that you can record off both at the same time because I triggered it using this. What else is this good for? Production notes, audio cues, controlling DSLRs, controlling GoPros, controlling anything else, other tablet usage, navigation, all that good stuff for $35 plus a $5 cable and what, an $8 app, a $7.99 app? Not bad at all, guys. We're still recording. I'm still looking at myself. We can do camera inception. I can mess around with the white balance, stuff like that. I wanted to keep this quick, just show you guys a super quick, fairly easy once you find the right documentation project that lets you get a cheap, fairly functional field monitor. So field monitor, pretty much under 50 bucks. If you need any more information on this, I'll put a couple links to XDA Dev and a couple of the products I'm using in the description. Feel free to ask questions, post in the comments, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, check out my recently released DIY speaker stands video that I did. I picked up the ELAC or ELAC, uh, Andrew Jones six and a half book, book, uh, bookshelf speakers. God, I can't talk. So I built some stands for those. Just put that video up, more automotive content. Okay, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is focused anymore, but I wanted to prove that this worked. I've got the GoPro over here. I've got the thing in my hand. This is not plugged in. It's going wirelessly to the GoPro. As you can see it previewing. I'm gonna transition from here to here. Hit record, boom, record, come on, record. Are we recording? We're recording. So this should, if I have it, be able to turn this. I should be recording on here and on here at the same time. It is recording, I can switch on this. Right now it's just wireless. If I plug it back into this camera, uh, I can switch over to the DSLR control. Again, my battery is still low because it always seems to be low in this damn GoPro, but I wanted to prove it works. Tablet, Amazon Fire, controlling GoPro, controlling DSLR when it's plugged in. Stop recording.